Now, has the Swiss government failed so badly to combat climate change that its consequences violate the human rights of Swiss people? Well, that is the claim made by thousands of retired Swiss women, and their case is being heard at the European Court of Human Rights today. Among the arguments they're making, the women say their age and gender places them among the highest risk groups of temperature-related mortality. Well, I'm really pleased now to be joined on the programme by Justine Ripoll, who is the campaign manager at the NGO Notre Affaire à Tous. She joins us from Strasbourg, where that case is taking place today. Thanks for joining us on France 24. Thanks to you. Can you just tell us why your organisation is supporting uh, these Swiss women? For you, what's this case all about? We are, um, I'm talking as, yeah, as a representative of Nostra Ferratus, which is one of the NGOs uh, involved in the case of the century, uh, one of the climate case uh, for climatic inaction uh, of the French government. Um, and we definitely support uh, the demands of this uh, Swiss women uh, because we won uh, in France and we want uh, them to win also in Switzerland and uh, today in front of the Euro European Court of uh, Human Rights. Uh, what this case is all about, uh, it's about uh, taking really climate uh, action and climate cases to the next level. Because what the court uh, is saying uh, by uh, hearing the cases is that uh, climate cases have to go faster. Uh, and that's why they are uh, giving uh, these hearings to have a say on climate cases in all uh, Europe and to have ambitious say, we hope, uh, on these cases. And you mentioned the case uh, that's being brought um, by a former mayor in France as well. This is from a former mayor of a suburb of Dunkirk in the north of the country. Uh, what's that case all about? This case is one of the two uh, cases against the French uh, state who have won uh, in court. Uh, what the Grand Sand case and the mayor are asking, uh, the, the, what they ask in France was uh, that uh, the, the climate inaction of the government was uh, that big that we weren't able to achieve our objectives uh, for 2030. Uh, and what this case uh, of the the mayor uh, in front of the European court uh, is asking is that uh, the, the inaction of the French government has an impact on the work of this mayor and on its responsibilities uh, towards its, its citizens. That's why the cases ask similar questions to the court. The questions are what's the relation between impacts on human rights and climate change and how far are uh, the, the obligations of states to really tackle climate change to protect their citizens. And look, if these cases are successful at the European Court of Human Rights, what do you think will happen next? Will we see more cases like this of governments uh, being forced to answer for themselves on an international stage? Definitely, uh, there will be more cases and there will be more successful cases. Because if uh, the court uh, has, a, uh, yeah, uh, defines a case law, a legal precedent that is very strong, and that defines really uh, important obligations for states in relation to their climate commitments, it will mean that all the courts in Europe, in 46 uh, member states of the Council of Europe, will have this kind of basis of law to be more ambitious in their own decision. So definitely we'll be seeing more cases and also cases uh, that are more uh, successful in really tackling uh, climate inaction from governments. Uh, that said, though, in the case of the, the Swiss uh, group of women, they've already lost two legal cases in Switzerland. Are you optimistic that they're actually going to win this particular case at the European Court of Human Rights? I'm, I'm not a legal uh, officer, so I can't predict the future, but definitely that's a good sign that the European Court is taking this issue because it means that uh, the ca these cases have failed in Switzerland because there was uh, gaps in the law, uh, some problems of interpretation for the judges in Switzerland, and that's why uh, the Grand Chamber of the Euro European Court uh, is taking this, is to fill these gaps and to say 
uh, how uh, the courts in every country has to interpret uh, the the climate uh, commitments and uh, and yeah that are in the in the several national law so definitely the fact that the european court is taking this issue uh, is a good sign and the fact that it's the grand chamber is even a greater sign Justine Ripoll from the NGO Notre Affaires Tous. It's good to talk to you. Thanks very much.